Hi there and welcome to the third tutorial for Motion Symphony 2.0 in Unreal Engine 5. In this tutorial we're going to uh, configure things a little bit better, we're going to calibrate things a little bit better so we get a better and more responsive animation and this is going to improve things quite a lot. Now when I say calibration this is just one, uh, one phase of calibration and that is setting the weightings in the configuration file. So this MM tutorial config that we made in the first uh, tutorial. Now the thing is that these uh, default weightings of one um, are going to make all of the features, the, the pose features that we're matching equal. And in fact there is a normalization uh, code uh, algorithm run on all this data to normalize them so they do in fact have uh, their, their largest and smallest values are equal between each pose. However this is a good this is a good starting point. However it's um, not all poses uh, features should be equal when we're talking about what we want out of the system. Some things we should say are more important than others to get the desired results that we want. And that is what we're going to do here. We're going to change these weightings to get the results that we want. Now, this is a bit of a dark art. It's not something that uh, you just know how to do straight away. It's not black and white. It's animation dependent. It's game dependent for what feel you want and all that stuff. So we're going to start by just putting in some good old values that I have found that work and we can play with them from there. So in the trajectory, we're going to set a 0.9 multiplier for past trajectory points. This means any trajectory point, its cost, its importance is about 10% less than the standard. Okay, that just means that our future trajectory is more important, which is generally true. Now we're going to also make the default direction weighting 5 and the default weighting 20. So this is the weight for the positions of the trajectory nodes. And now this might seem like an incredible weight, like 20 times the weight. However, it makes sense because we want responsiveness above all else. If the character doesn't go where we go, we're just watching a mocap clip. We're not actually controlling it. So generally very high on the trajectory uh, positions here. Let's now move on to our pose uh, uh, quality features. And we're going to look at the momentum. Now the momentum, we want a weight of four. Uh, it's pretty important and it's also a single thing. So we'll keep that at that and we'll keep the rotation at a weight of one. Our bone facing for our hips we can use a value of one as well. That's fine to keep as standard. And our spine bone location, let's set that to three. That just helps, this just helps keep the body, upper body sort of stable and not like rocking around. It can also be used to differentiate w whether you're like leaning. So for example, when you do a run start or acceleration or deceleration, your upper body moves up and down. And by matching this upper bone, it's, it's allowing us to match that a little bit better. Now we of course can't, we could match that by matching more bones in total, like the hands and stuff, but we want to keep this list as small as possible. Um, so we only match the minimum amount of things to get the desired results we want. Let's move on to the bone location and velocity. And in this case, we're going to keep the velocity weighting at one, but we're going to set the weights of the, um, uh, the positions of the, the feet to five. Now, the reason we do this is because we think that the position is quite important. If we match a pose where the position is different, we're going to get a sudden snap in the uh, in the movement. So let's give this a try and see what happens uh, in our scene. And we are getting some animation, but we're also getting some animation we don't want. Now, it's important to keep in mind that calibration is more than just this config. We do need to do a lot of work with tagging. So for example, these animations where they stop and turn around, we don't really want those happening very much. Um, so we might actually just get rid of them for the meantime and we can introduce them later. Uh, but I don't generally find I got much use out of those in general, but let's go. That does feel a lot better to me. However, it could still be a lot more responsive. So let's go over here and instead of just in visually tweaking these uh, weightings, let's go to this quality versus responsiveness ratio slider. Now, this is basically setting the weight of all of the features in input response versus all of the features in pose quality. So 0.5 means they're equally balanced. One means 100% weight on uh, input response 
and zero means 100% weight on quality. Obviously, neither of those extremes are going to be very good. I'm going to set this at a weight of 0 0.7 to 5. How did I find out this weight? I tweaked it. I put it higher than 0 0.5 and then it, until I felt that it was good enough and still maintaining quality. So let's hit play and get a feel for this. This feels a lot better. Uh, I mean, it's still not perfect. As, as I've said, there's a lot more things to do, but the character is now generally going the way I want it. But it's still smooth, you see. So if I go into here and I make this like 0 0.9, let's see if we can make this not so smooth. So the animation takes off straight away and it's very snappy. You know, it actually isn't too bad. But I think we might find, yeah, you can see, you can see now as we're going around corners, like trying to do this curve, the, the feet are having troubles and we're getting this sort of stuff going on. Because we've made the trajectory way more important than the pose. So we get to go where we want, but we're also getting uh, issues. So I'm going to set that back to 0 0.725. Hit save. I'm pretty happy with that for the general calibration. Um... Now, I will just quickly show you so you are aware. If we go on our motion matching node, there's a whole bunch of uh, things here that do affect the calibration, but we're gonna go through them individually on a different, uh, in a different tutorial. So there's all these settings like pose favor, next natural and pose tolerance. There's also uh, tagging and pose favoring so for example in the next tutorial we're going to go and try and make it so that our run loop is highly favorable and gets played more often than other animations so for now thank you for watching that's the third tutorial done i'll see you in the next one